22 years ago, the idea, just the idea of a gay and lesbian hall of fame, it was radical. It was revolutionary. The only city-sponsored hall of fame recognizing the great things that the LGBT communities contributes. Huh. 22, year later, 22 years later, and it still is. Yes? So let me say again to Miss Mary and the friends of the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame, I thank you so much for, for preserving this for us. So we have much to celebrate, yes? In two words, can you say marriage equality? By far, marriage equality in the state of Illinois has been one of the best wins of late. The mayor could not be here today, but he was one of our biggest advocates, signing Land Legal's petition, meeting with advocates, calling individual legislators, and asking them to do what was, what, what was right on our behalf, and then celebrating that win, as many of us do, at Sidetrack. One of the lessons of this win has been unity. Working together, we achieved what no one ideology, single individual, or politician could achieve. Yvette and I were at, were, we were one of the thousands, not hundreds, thousands, who rallied in Springfield, and we were surprised, gratified, happy to see so many different people out in support. High school students, union reps, seniors, religious groups, families, professional groups of all types, African Americans and Latinos, all of us. All of us in the rain, laughing, celebrating love and life, and asking our elected officials to do the right thing. This year's inductees represent what is good about our community. And as we honor them, you will recognize that each of them has worked for the greater good. Each have reached beyond their own comfort zone to help achieve something that serves a larger purpose. And in the end, defines what is so great about the city we live in, the city of Chicago. So thank you for coming out tonight. But before I leave, I now have the pleasure of introducing a fabulous colleague someone who thinks about the public health from a global perspective and the perspective of the many communities he serves. He's smart, he's strategic, he's a fighter when it comes to addressing the health issues our communities are concerned about. Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health, Bachara Chakor. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for uh, um, for inviting me to join you here tonight to celebrate the contributions of the great uh, inductees uh, and honorees. Um, I want to start by thanking the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame for the invitation to speak and for its continuous work to make the world aware of the contributions of our LGBT community here in Chicago and the community's dedication to equality. Last week, as you've heard, is a, was a pivotal in our Illinois history and the entire LGBT movement. Finally, Gays and lesbians in our state are guaranteed the fundamental right to marry, and countless couples and families will be acknowledged for what they are under the law, families just like everyone else. Here at the Chicago Department of Public Health, we realize that there are communities that are integral to Chicago that in some case face disproportionate uh, health risks and may require unique, culturally competent, and inclusive approaches. And this, this is why last year in 2012, and under le the leadership of Mayor Emanuel, our Office of LGBT Health worked to enhance the access of care to Chicago LGBT residents and launched a community action plan that outlines 22 different strategies to directly address the community's specific health needs. Today's honorees are a great example of how the community works. It's a great example how diligence and innovation lead to change. And this is why we improve the quality of life for not only the LGBT residents in our city, but for our residents citywide. Thank you again for inviting me. And on behalf of Mayor Emanuel and all of us at the Chicago Department of Public Health, I'd like to con congratulate the honorees. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And now we have a very special guest joining us this evening. We are so excited to have her here. She's been a very long time uh, friend and uh, supporter of our community. Please welcome President Tony Preckwinkle, Cook County Board of Commissioners. Thank you very much and good evening everybody. One more time, good evening. 
There we go. I want to acknowledge again uh, Ranjit Hakim, who is the director of our Department of Ethics and Human Rights. Ranjit, where are you? Stand up. There we go, Ranjit, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this celebration of the outstanding individuals and organizations that have been inducted into the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame this year. These activists have spent their careers advocating for and advancing the rights of the LGBT community, and for this we are all eternally grateful. I would also like to congratulate Mary Moten, an old friend who was recently elected as the new co-chairperson of the Friends of the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame on this successful event. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations as well to the members of the Illinois House and Senate for passing marriage equality. <laughs> A special shout out to Representative Greg Harris and Senator Heather Staines for leading the charge. It's an amazing moment in the history of this state, and we should all be very proud of the work we did to accomplish this enactment. And I want to thank you all for your good work in promoting equality in the state of Illinois. We as a state have made an excellent step forward in creating equality for all of our citizens, but the fight for equality is far from over. The United States Senate recently passed the Employment Non-Discrimination Act of 2013, ENDA would ban workplace discrimination against members of the LGBT community. But we will we'll still have to wait for this legislation to pass in the House of Representatives. <coughs> the House has shown its unwillingness to create a more even playing field for Americans that need the most help and protection from their government. While ENDA faces an uncertain fate in the House, Cook County government protected members of the LGBT community from discrimination in employment, access to county facilities, services and contracts, and housing contracts from the initial passage of the Cook County Human Rights Ordinance in March 16, March 16, 1993. I was not a member of the body at that time, but I'm proud to see that local governments can take the lead in progressive caucuses. But local government cannot wait for Congress to take the lead on these issues any longer. We must all continue to fight for equal rights for all our citizens. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gary Chichester, and I'm co-chair along with Mary Morton for the Friends of the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame. And I think that we've all heard enough about marriage equality in Illinois, so I'd like to be the first one to say aloha to Hawaii and congratulate them on their win also. I'd like to welcome you to the 23rd Annual Hall of Fame Awards. Uh, we honor our communities, the individuals, the organizations, and the friends whose contributions help to make Chicago's LGBT communities as vibrant, as exciting as they are. Chicago is unique as it's the only municipality that honors its LGBT communities, their citizens, and uh, contributions that they make to the community as well as the city as a whole. The Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame documents these contributions and shares our heritage on its website, one of the largest uh, uh, LGBT website hits uh, in the country. Uh, it's, it makes us feel very, very good that we're used that way. On a solemn note, our hearts are saddened this past year by the deaths of James A. Busson, Harley McMillan, and Don Clark Nitch. Since, 1990, or since 1973, Jim Busson's engaging personality and senses of human, humor and fairness have, added many, have aided many Chicago gay and lesbian efforts. Besides much activity in the gay rights lobbying and fundraising, he was longtime leader of Dignity Chicago and served as president of Dignity USA from 1985 to 1989. Jim was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1994. Harley McMillan uh, was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1992.
played an important role in the Howard Brown Memorial Clinic, now the Howard Brown Health Center. He was instrumental in organizing the AIDS Action Project, which contributed in large part to the development of the City of Chicago's comprehensive AIDS strategic plan. Dawn Clark Netch. What can you say? I always look at her as uh, having such a good time leading off the Pride Parade through Boys Town every year. She was a queen on the back of the convertible, and she was just beautiful. She loved the lar large ovations along the way and was an incredible human being. Dawn was inducted as friend of the community in 1995 for her long and distinguished career as public, in public service as Illinois Constitution writer, legislator, and state controller. And I always like to remind us that she's just not another pretty face. <laughs> Especially uh, thankful for her support of the lesbian and gay rights and the efforts against HIV and AIDS. Jim, Harley, Dawn will be greatly missed. This evening is dedicated to your memory. Now for the business at hand. I would like to introduce our presenters tonight who came, who named Chicago's Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame 2013 inductees. Megan Carney and Sanford Gaylord are perfect examples of individuals who have made meaningful contributions to Chicago's LGBT communities. In About Face Theater and other theatrical work, Megan has changed the landscape of Chicago's sexual minority communities through her commitment to healthy development of LGBTQA youth. Megan was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2005. Sanford Gaylord was inducted in 2012. Actor, activist, and writer, he has used his creative skills for community good. He co-founded A Real Read, the African-American performance ensemble, and has appeared in LGBT-focused documentaries. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Carney and Sanford Day Gaylord. Good evening, everyone. So let's get this show rolling. Our first inductee this evening is an activist, organizer, and human rights advocate who currently serves as the executive director of the Chicago, Ab of the Chicago Abortion Fund, advocating for low-income women seeking to exercise the freedom to control their own reproductive life. Galen... <coughs> Galen Alcaraz was a founding board member of Affinity Community Services when it changed from being a collective to an Illinois not-for-profit agency. It works for the rights of black lesbian and bisexual women in the Chicago area. During her board tenure at Affinity, Alcaraz assumed leadership roles in all areas of the group's work, including service as vice president of the board. She also played a leading role in other organizations working for the welfare of all women, black lesbians, and children. A current board member of the Illinois Caucus for Adolescent Health and the Midwest Access Project, Alcaraz was a member of the Chicago Commission on Human Relations former advisory council for, I'm sorry, former advisory council on lesbian, gay, and bi bisexual and transgender issues. She has, been an, she has been active in numerous community organizations, a lifelong Chicagoan, an undergraduate and graduate alumna of DePaul University. She, she is also a published writer and poet. For her work for reproductive rights, health, and justice, and her advocacy for many underserved communities, tonight, the Hall of Fame inducts a Galen Alcaraz into <laughs> membership. Our next inductee has simultaneously been a leader in philanthropy 
in nonprofit organizations on Chicago's cultural scene and as a public spirited attorney. In all of these areas, he has not only helped many institutions to grow with security, but has assisted them in making them more diverse. As a lifelong Chicagoan, Jim Alexander initially through practice with his father in the law firm of Alexander and Alexander, serves as co-trustee -tr for the Elizabeth Morris Charitable, Charitable Trust and the Elizabeth Mor Morris Genius Charitable Trust. In recent decades, the trusts have directed millions of dollars to the city's cultural institutions as well as LGBT communities. Just one example is out at CHM series here at the Chicago History Museum. <laughs> Alexander is firm in, in his belief that institutions must offer change both outside and inside the boardroom. He has been diligent in his own volunteer leadership and development of the Center on Halsted, the Harris Theater for Music and Dance, the new Chicago High School for the Arts, and the LGBT Community Fund housed at the Chicago Community Trust for his immeasurable and transformative impact on Chicago and on LGBT rights and welfare over three decades. Tonight, the Hall of Fame welcomes James L. Alexander into <laughs> membership. The next inductee combines lobbying and organizational skills for LGBT issues in the halls of government and in the ranks of his church with work as a comedian, commentator, and advocacy group manager. Both while chairing Illinois Unites for Marriage, a key player in passing the Illinois Marriage Equality Bill, <laughs> and while serving as a company member of Gay Co Productions, where <laughs> where gay is the given, not the punchline. <laughs> Jim Bennett. <laughs> brings humor into serious situations and pursues serious causes with skill and determination. At Chicago's Broadway United Methodist Church in the 1990s, he led a campaign to assist the church's pastor, the Reverend Gregory Dell, a 2008 Hall of Fame friend of the community inductee. <laughs> when Dell was put on church trial for conducting a service of Holy Union for two men, Bennett then served on a task force challenging the denomination's national policies. His quotations and aphorisms posted on the church's signboard are well known to all who stroll Broadway. The, ho the host of Windy City Radio, when it aired from 2001 to 2005, he has been the Midwest Regional Director of Lambda Legal in Chicago for the past five years. Tonight, for his leadership, wit, and tireless energy, James L. Bennett joins the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame. Our next inductee has been an advocate for the interests of LGBT Latinos and Latinas, including immigrants and those affected by HIV, for the past 20 years. Jorge Sestu's tenure at the historic Jane Addams Hull House Association 
sparked his activism in 1997. He has been a catalyst of change for several local organizations detailed in the program booklet. As an advocate for culturally sensitive HIV services for Latinos, he was instrumental in including special populations in the Illinois Comprehensive HIV Services Plan. He was also a creator of Orgullo and Acción, a clearinghouse between Latino and Latina LGBT local groups and national groups. Since 2008, Sestu has chaired Unidos LGBT, a national Latina and Latino human rights organization. He has also been a presenter on the status of the Latino and Latina LGBT movement in the US and Puerto Rico at six of the annual national Creating Change conferences. In the Chicago leather community, Sestu has won the title of Mr. Chicago Leather. <laughs> and is known as Spicy Leather Toro. <laughs> in the charitable fraternity called Mama's Family. He is currently Director of Programs and Services for Vida Sida, the Chicago AIDS Service Foundation. For this history of advocacy and social service, the Hall of Fame welcomes Jorge Sestu this evening. For more than 25 years, our next inductee has been committed to the public service at the state, county, and federal levels of government, as well as the Democratic Party. In 2003, our inductee, Rocco Claps, became the first openly gay Illinois cabinet member when Governor Rod Blagojevich named him director of the Illinois Department of Human Rights. <laughs> he has since been reappointed by Governor Quinn. As department head, he oversees eliminating a wide range of unlawful discrimination, including discrimination because of sexual orientation, gender-related identity, and marital and familial status in areas of job, real estate, credit, and public services and accommodations. His department also combats sexual harassment. Under his leadership in 2005, it helped get sexual orientation included into the State Human Rights Act making Illinois the 15th state with such protections. Earlier, Clapp served as, state, as staff of the Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan as Deputy Cook Counter Assessor, as an aide to former U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Donna Shalala, and in roles with the Democratic National Committee as Chief of Staff for Chicago's 1996 Democratic National Convention. Recognizing his, his dedication and ongoing life of professional public service, the Hall of Fame inducts Rocco J. Claps into membership tonight. Our next inductee, Rudolph Johnson Jr., was born in Chicago's Lakeview neighborhood in 1947 and went on to lead Lakeview business organizations with distinction. He ran a bar that, was, that has sponsored numerous gay sports teams and events, and he aided many local social service and political groups. Rudy Johnson had a 50-year association with North Halsted Street. His parents' first home was a cold water flat near Sheffield and Lincoln. From 1952 to 1979, he grew up at 2112 North Halsted, and from 1983 
to his sudden death in 2006, he was a founder and partner of the North End Bar at 3733 North Halstead. Johnson learned the building trades from his contractor father and from his Lane Tech education. Because of Rudy Johnson, the son's trusted leadership, he became the longest serving president of the North Halstead Merchants Association, which is now the North Halstead Business Alliance, producing North Halstead Market Days and other annual events. He encouraged saving the money that they brought in, some of which later went towards the center on Halstead. Johnson himself invested in much real estate along more than two miles of Halstead and helped to revitalize the area. The North End became the city's first gay sports bar. For his history of community building, Rudy Johnson is inducted tonight into the Hall of Fame. Accepting the award is another longtime gay business figure and Johnson's partner, Michael Wazalewski. Lee Newell played critical roles in maintaining Chicago's LGBT social service infrastructure from the mid-70s to the mid-80s. He was also active in broader community organizations and he photographically documented Chicago LGBT life for almost another 10 years. A year after moving here in 1975, Newell volunteered as a helpline operator at Gay Horizons the forerunner of today's Center on Halstead. Two weeks later, he was elected chairperson and found that the group was several thousand dollars in debt with no realistic plan to pay it off. <laughs> he then met with community leaders, bar owners, and other organizations, and with the help of the rest of the board, all the debts were paid in two months. <laughs> a week later, there was a fire in the electrical distribution closet. Gay Horizon soon had to find new quarters. Again, Newell took the lead in fundraising. After two months, the group moved into an Oakdale Avenue basement office. Later, Newell became the first Horizons chairperson to have served an entire term. He stayed with the <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said. He stayed with the group for nearly 10 more years. In 1985, having worked with photographer Jack Sitar at Gay Life Newspaper, he was hired freelance to be the first photographer for the new Windy City Times. He took some 5,000 photos of nightlife and news, which are now housed here in the Chicago History Museum. In 1986, Newell served as the last president of OPEN, which was Chicago's first LGBT political action committee. Later, he was active on community zoning issues before moving from Chicago in 2001. Tonight, he's back, and we welcome Lee A. Newell II into the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame. Our next inductee is another native and lifelong resident of the Chicago area. The woman known as Pate has been an active member of Chicago's LGBT community since she began working at the Swan Club and the Closet in 1986, 
all the way to her current workplace at Parlor on Clark. Her loyal customers and her volunteer work for LGBT and AIDS organizations have brought her acclaim. But since she has regarded nothing as more meaningful than her years of animal rescue commitment. During her career, Pate has volunteered for organizations including Chicago House, Ride for AIDS Chicago, and the Lesbian Community Cancer Project. She has organized or tended bar for fundraisers, benefiting a wide variety of other social service and health groups in the broader Chicago community. Her largely unheralded work with animals has included countless hours of anim animal rescues here and elsewhere. After Hurricane Katrina, she helped with relocating and providing safe shelter for misplaced pets. She has worked with Chicago Canine Rescue as well as with Found Chicago, which aids the city's most medically and behaviorally challenged dogs. While mourning the deaths of her entire family and fighting her own battle with cancer, she managed to volunteer with New Leash on Life and for one tail at a time. Pate regards her primary activism as helping neglected, abused, and unwanted dogs find loving homes. For her history of helping both humans and pets, tonight the Hall of Fame inducts Pate into membership. Our next inductee is a lifelong observer of the arts and is a third generation native Chicagoan. Andrew Panter became one of the city's most influential social and cultural critics, earning international attention. Earlier in his career, he was editor and staff writer at what at the time was WFMT's Chicago Magazine and then a staff reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Later, he was an on-air arts critic, program host, and producer for WBEZ before returning to WFMT Fine Arts Radio and WFMT.com, critic at large and interviewer in 1998. He has remained there for more than 15 years. He has contributed to some 2,000 pieces of arts criticism to the Chicago Sun-Times since 1991 and has been its classical music and opera critic since 2006. He started covering LGBT subjects and giving an open forum to activists in 1979 as the 19-year-old editor-in-chief editor of the Chicago Maroon at the University of Chicago. He was the first regular writer for a mainstream Chicago paper to write openly about being gay and was the first regular Chicago radio host, producer, and contributor to do the same. He was also an early Chicago House volunteer. Panter was educated in Chicago Public Schools and the University of Chicago and the University of Wisconsin at Madison. His work has appeared in numerous periodicals and on broadcasting stations around the world. As you can tell from the program booklet in more detail, you can see that more in detail. Um, for this distinguished career in the arts and in activism tonight. The Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame welcomes Andrew Panter into membership.
tonight's next inductee, Laura Ricketts. Laura Ricketts is a Chicago philanthropist in both LGBT and broader communities who is also the first openly gay woman to own a major league baseball franchise, the Chicago Cubs. She has created opportunities and a model for other business leaders to follow. Ricketts practiced law at the Chicago firm of Schiff, Harden, and Waite before leaving the practice to co-found Echo Travel, a firm that was dedicated to fostering ecotourism worldwide and operated an online magazine. Today, she is actively involved in several, several charitable organizations. She serves on the National Leadership Council of Lamb the Legal, where she was a board member for six years. She is on the Leadership Council of Housing Opportunities for Women, which helps homeless women and children in the Chicago area, and was a board member for eight years. Ricketts is on the board of Opportunity Education, an international charity promoting educational opportunities for children in developing nations. She, is also, she also co-chairs the Democratic National Committee's LGBT Leadership Council and is a member of Congressman Mike Quigley's LGBT Advisory Council. She is a co-founder and director of LPAC, the first lesbian political Action Committee and has chaired numerous Chicago LGBT charitable fundraisers. Recognizing her history of philanthropy and of leadership in both nonprofit and business worlds, tonight the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame gladly inducts Laura Ricketts. One of the greatest American puppeteers and children's entertainers, Burr Tilstrom, was a major pioneer of television from its earliest days. His creations and national television program, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie, became household names, and he was a direct influence on such other entertainment giants as Jim Henson and the Muppets. Born in Chicago in 1917, and a 1935 Sen High School graduate. Tilstrom began his career here and was based here for much of his life. He created Kukla while still a teenager. Later, he toured for RCA, demonstrating the new TV medium through puppetry. After performing at the 1939 New York World's Fair, more than 2,000 shows, he met radio singer Fran Allison and invited her to join his troupe. The run lasted more than 10 years and culminated in their national television program from 1949 to 1957. Reruns and new versions appeared into the 1980s, including a national educational television series taped at Chicago's WTTW. Tilstrom won five, em five Emmys and a Peabody Award. After his 1985 death, he was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. His archives are held here at the Chicago History Museum, and he was buried at Rose Hill Cemetery. The Hall of Fame is honored to induct Burr Tilstrom as a member tonight. Accepting his award is Gary T. Johnson, president of the Chicago History Museum. For 27 years, our next inductee, David Zack, 
was artistic director at Chicago's Bailiwick Repertory Theater, which premiered many gay and lesbian plays during its annual Pride series. The series itself was a 1996 Hall of Fame inductee. He is still at work and has now been nurturing LGBT theater for more than three decades. Zach's Bailiwick presented a stream of LGBT works, including both world and Chicago premieres, and some of those works saw later productions around the globe. Titles included David Dillon's Party, Claudia Allen's Hannah Free, Robert Chesley's Jerker, Paul Rudnick's Jeffrey, Terence McNally's Corpus Christi and Kiss of the Spider Woman, and Del Shore's Southern Baptist Sissies. Zach's work has won multiple Joseph Jefferson Awards for directing and writing. He has directed in other US cities and in Seoul, Dublin, and London. Today, Zach develops new LGBT work as executive director of Chicago's Pride Film and Plays. Annually, he spearheads the Great Gay Play Contest, from which several new LGBT works have emerged. His most recent Chicago premiere involved under a Rainbow Flag, a musical based on the life story of a still-living Chicagoan, John Phillips, as a gay soldier during and after World War II. It won 2013 Jeff Awards as both Best New Work and Best Musical. Yeah. <laughs> Zach has also been an educator, photographer, and journalist. And for his decades of developing LGBT theater, helping emerging actors and writers, and enriching our lives through cultural experiences, the Hall of Fame welcomes David Zack into membership tonight. Our first of two organizational inductees tonight, Lambda Legal's Midwest Regional Office. was established 20 years ago in Chicago in 1993, not 1983. That's a typo in the program booklet and in the display outside. <laughs> the Midwest Regional Office has participated in some of the 40-year-old national organization's most important LGBT rights cases. The Midwest Office filed the successful marriage equality case in neighboring Iowa, <laughs> and was engaged in litigating the parallel Illinois case at the time the state legislator passed our own state's own marriage bill this month. Other important cases on which the Midwest office has worked include those establishing schools' obligations to protect LGBT students from harassment, <laughs> parental and family rights for lesbian and gay people, and insurance advocacy for persons with HIV. As as well as anti-discrimination representation of Howard Brown Health Center when it sought to open a new facility. An early Chicago case involved the Ad Hoc Committee of Proud Black Lesbians and Gays, a 1993 Hall of Fame inductee, enabling the committee to participate in the city's annual Bud Billiken Day Parade. These and many other cases, as well as legal advice to thousands of persons, 
make Lambda Legal's Midwest Regional Office a worthy inductee into the Hall of Fame. Accepting the award are Regional Director Jim Bennett, National Marriage Project Director Camilla Taylor, Senior Staff Attorney Christopher Clark, HIV Project Director Scott Shadis, and the staff of the Midwest Region. Our next organizational inductee, Pow Wow. <laughs> which stands for Performers or Writers for Women on Women's Issues, was established in 2003 to provide a weekly performance space for women artists to create, develop, and present artistic performances and writing. It also mentors young women and teen girls who seek to become full-time artists, and it develops alliances with men to support women's social justice issues and women artists. Pow Wow supports women and teen girls who are re-entering society from traumatic domestic environments or penal, penal systems by providing them with arts-based education programs that empower them to pursue arts careers. In addition, it provides art-based literacy programs in schools. The Pow Wow Poetry Venue has grown from fewer than 12 people in the audience to 75 or 100 persons weekly. Pow Wow and its founder, C.C. Carter, have received more than a dozen awards and have been recognized across the country. The group's programs have aimed especially to meet the needs of Chicago Southside women of color, those who are young, those with low incomes or from underserved communities, and those who are disabled, homeless, affected by trauma, or are LBTQ. For its work to create opportunities for displaced and marginalized women and young women. Tonight, Pow Wow joins the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame. Accepting the award are Dr. Collar Carter, founder of Pow Wow, and other members of the organization. Pow Wow.
as a friend of the community, our next inductee is longtime Chicago Sun-Times columnist and author, Neil Steinberg. A native of Berea, Ohio, Steinberg came to this area to attend Northwestern University and in 1987 joined the Sun-Times, where he has since chronicled his developing love of and education about Chicago, an education that has included steady coverage of LGBT communities. With an enviable frequency, clarity, and consistency in the daily press, Steinberg's distinctive, passionate, often provocative voice reaches the wide audience of the nation's ninth most circulated newspaper and a national syndication afterward, often introducing his readers to LGBT subjects and individuals. His columns quickly have become favorites of social media posters and commentators, magnifying their impact greatly. Steinberg has recognized the fundamental nature of the LGBT fight for human rights, freedom, fairness, and basic dignity from early on when he was one of the first daily journalists to cover the AIDS pandemic, as well as to write regularly on the growing political force of LGBT Chicagoans. He took up marriage equality in 1996, 17 years ago. and never wavered on the subject. And he has done all of this with style, choice personal anecdotes, and as appropriate, wit, sometimes of the wicked variety. For his history of supporting the core principles of LGBT equality and regularly speaking to readers' hearts and minds, the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame has selected Neil Steinberg as a friend of the community. Our last inductee of the evening, Brenda Webb. <laughs> Brenda Webb defines a special kind of friend of the community. In 1981, on her own initiative, the longtime pr program director of, of Chicago Filmmakers decided to start a festival showcasing, showcasing LGBT, LGBTQ film and video work. That festival, now known as Reeling, the Chicago LGBT International Film Festival was the second such festival in the world. And had <laughs> and it has been a major cultural event for Chicago's sexual minority communities for 32 years. The climate, the climate for the many successful crossover theatrical and premium cable movies resulted directly from the work of pioneers such as Brenda Webb, who have both supported independent filmmakers and helped to create a general audience and market for films with LGBTQ subject matter. A tireless worker, unafraid to take up projects others would shy away from, who also stays up on festival nights baking sweets for volunteers and filmgoers alike, she has inspired hundreds of sexual minority filmmakers here and elsewhere to tell their stories through film, video, and digital media. This year, because of her vision and leadership, a relaunched, restructured, and reinvigorated Reeling 31 is drawing crowds and making connections between media makers even as we gather here tonight. The festival runs through Thursday night, by the way. So catch it. <laughs> there would have been no such Chicago festival without her hard work, dedication, and perseverance tonight.
for her role in nurturing and inspiring independent film and media, the Hall of Fame welcomes Brenda Webb as a friend of the community. Thank you so much. Let's give Megan and Sanford a round of applause. Also, Commissioner Noriega, Commissioner Chakar, and President Perkwinkle, thank you for joining us tonight. We also want to thank a couple of folks whose name you have not heard this evening. We want to thank the board in particular, Bill Heinema, Dick Yuvari, Bill Kelly, who writes every word of that script. I just want to say that was Bill. And uh, please welcome Israel, please thank Israel Wright for all of his work. I thank him in my speech. Okay, I'm thank you. We'd like to also thank you for coming and supporting the Hall of Fame tonight and helping to honor the individuals and organizations that we honored here tonight. So we hope that you get it out on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Again, 20 years later, who would have thought, you know? Um, and also, we'd like you to do, do view the emancipa Emancipation Proclamation in the outer lobby and say hello to Kukla. He really wants to greet everyone. So, and actually, the History Museum is very eager to take any shots that you might have if you want to forward them to the History Museum for Jill Austin attention because they're doing a special program with it. So thank you one and all. We'll see you on November 20th. See you next year. Uh, we're all going to be at the University of Illinois Forum. And on we go. Good night.